Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lean Heart. We're more than a channel, we are a community. Today, I am with somebody that is one of the most respected collectors in the Pokemon card game. None other than eBay's King Pokemon or Gary from Pawn Stars. Hey, 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 hi. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? Oh, it's going going real well, Leon. I'm doing very I, I'm doing very well. I hope mm -hmm. you're doing really well. Excellent. Um, I see I see you have something in your uh, front pockets other than a McDonald's coffee uh, and a cell phone. What what is that? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, you're probably a little curious why I'm in Dallas too. Actually, uh, yeah, I think we I think we all are. What's be, going because on? I came down from Las Vegas this morning, and first of all, of course, to see Leon. Uh, to see my boy here, Leon, and also to you know share a little information uh, with your community that I've heard so much about and that I've you know that I've yeah the, close the heart squad to. the heart Got, squad he wa yes. he watches mm -hmm. and he's a huge fan of y'all the heart squad yes very very much so and so I thought well I was coming down for a nice deal and to see Leon so we thought we would just do this little film just to show off you know what the deal was and it turns out it's probably the biggest Pokemon deal money wise in history yeah <laughs> this deal guys uh how, how much was it for approximately uh, it was a little bit under a hundred thousand dollars okay so we do know mm -hmm. that there was another card that did sell for around 60 to sixty five thousand dollars but guys i think this probably blows that out of the water what are the what are the cards that you got okay we got a pristine 10 bgs first edition base set charizard Oh my uh, gosh. One of only two in the world. There's only two in the world? And the reason I wanted it so bad uh -huh. was because I have the other one. So, <laughs> so I wanted to have both, and it was almost like it was a one of a kind because I have them both. So anyway, I've been chasing this for a long time. Uh, with Leon's help, we were able to track it down and uh and get the deal together and and that's, so that's wait 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 wait. are uh -huh. we ready are we are we are, okay do you think we're ready to show everybody the two cards like this these are essentially the holy grails of pokemon we didn't yes. say what the second card is guys you're gonna see it and you are gonna be equally impressed are you ready i think yes yeah, all right let's show it let's show, we show it. one at oh, one yeah, time yeah let's do it okay okay that's the shadow is. okay you go ahead with yours okay here's the first one Oh my gosh, there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a pristine 10 from Beckett, first edition Charizard card. And he, Gary, has now he has both of them. Now, yes. I'll, I'll show you mine, it's not too shabby itself, right? It's a uh, PSA 10 shadowless card. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many of these are in the world or what uh, population-wise. There's, there's actually 40. Okay, so there's 40 of them, but the thing yeah. is, guys, I think shadowless cards mm -hmm. are incredibly rare, especially in this condition. Like, not just rare, mm -hmm. I think they are very, very rare, and I know they are very popular as well. Yes, and they're going higher and higher and higher. Shadowless cards are extremely popular now, and they're going to continue to be for the next few years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you got the pristine 10, and you got this one, both of them. Look at that right there, guys. That's incredible. And it looks like, uh, it looks like I know the case is signed by the original illustrator himself. Uh, whether you leave that on there or not, I know that'll kind of be up to you with well, that. Well, I'll tell but... you, it's pretty cool having it on there. Uh, my other one does not have it. So this is actually a one of a kind with that the autograph is. on the case. That's mm -hmm. a, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. One of the one of the reasons why and Gary he flew all the way out here to Dallas. So we're in Dallas, Texas, y'all. Obviously, yes. you know that's where I'm from. But he flew all the way out here uh, to make this deal. And so I just thought one, mm -hmm. uh, it's an honor to meet you in person. Well, it's an honor to meet you and to oh, participate no. with your community. You oh, know? well, I appreciate. It. And yes. I can't tell you like mm -hmm. everybody, like mm -hmm. the Heart Squad watching and everybody else mm -hmm. that watches this video. I think. They appreciate you so much. They know mm -hmm. who you are, and they know what a genuine, amazing person you are. And if you don't know, guys, let's uh, maybe we'll, let's grill them with a few questions, just so if y'all don't know. And they're gonna be okay. They won't be no. They won't be difficult. We mm -hmm. we won't no math. No no well science. <laughs> I guess you'd be great at that. I'd be good at math. I was and gonna science. say I'm terrible <laughs> at math. Can you just for everybody out there watching, kind of just say a high level overview of who you are and uh, how you got into Pokemon card collecting. Yes, well, uh, I started uh, pretty much in the Pokemon business at the end of 1998. Oh, wow. And then 
uh, my sons who were in the uh, in the 10 to 12 year old range they got into Pokemon like everybody else did soon after that and then through them I became interested and became a collector and when they dropped out of the hobby I didn't I kept going and going and collecting smart until, decision and I uh, I started off pretty much like all of you have and uh, you give it time you give a dedication and if you're honest and interested you're gonna do well and I've done sure very is. well with it that's incredible if you ought to know on eBay uh, as you go by King Pokemon mm -hmm. on eBay and you have Literally one of the most gorgeous posts you are going to see, but a lot it's of Charizard and you have obviously a massive Charizard collection. Can you kind of tell us why Charizard and uh, just why collecting all of the cards like you have been? Yeah, well, uh, Charizard, uh, again, back in 1999, my youngest son, who was about 10 at the time, he fell asleep holding a Charizard card in his hand, staring at it as if it was the holy grail which it was back then yeah and uh and so i kind of uh, lived through that memory of seeing the look on his face when he was looking at that charizard and now every time i look at a charizard i see my youngest son's face i love that and that mm -hmm. and that's what it's about that's what i preach on the mm -hmm. channel is just like pokemon cards they're they're more than just cards they have mm -hmm. stories and they yes. they're so nostalgic and they're I love hearing that story that it's nostalgic to you and yeah. I know there's a lot of hardcore collectors mm -hmm. that are around my age on the channel and right. older and we all have different stories and why yes. we collect and I share the same passion Very for true. the Pokemon card game. That couldn't be more true. And, that, yes. and that's what I just like about Pokemon in general mm -hmm. is it brings families closer together mm -hmm. and it brings people of all ages closer together sharing mm -hmm. in this passion for Pokemon and Pokemon cards. True. Can you just tell us about, mm -hmm. um, you have probably the biggest Charizard card collection in the world. Yeah, on my, uh, on my eBay, uh, King underscore Pokemon, I'm sure most of you have probably seen it. It's a million dollar uh, Charizard collection. It's not too much. There's over a hundred gem mint cards. I believe 87 PSA 10 uh, PSA Charizards, PSA 10s, wow. and then maybe a dozen or two Beckett's uh, uh, 9.5 Gem Mints, along with, I believe, seven now pristine 10s. So uh, I'm sure most of you have probably seen that. That's gotten hundreds of thousands of views and saves, and uh, yeah. so that that's popular. And I, I list it now, I think, at about 1.2 million it's probably worth a touch less than that, maybe under a million or okay, just not, add a not million. Not too much of a difference but there. That, but that's because I don't want to sell it. And even if I got a proper offer, I wouldn't sell it. Uh, I put it up there because people are interested in seeing it. Yeah. But not to sell it, that's uh, my pride and joy. Yeah. And that'll go to the grave with me. And my sons will, you know, we'll get them later. Yeah. Well, that's just incredible. And I, like, I'm... One, I'm just so happy to be with somebody that's not only respecting the community, but you just, like, I see the passion. I see mm -hmm. that you have, a, like, a great interest in the cards, and they mean so much to you. Oh, they just, they just mean the world. They mean the world to me. I woke up at uh, midnight last night. I got uh -huh. on a plane by 2.30 in the morning, and I was from Las Vegas, and I was here in Dallas at, uh, at about 7 o'clock, and all of it was for... Pokemon was to buy Pokemon, and that didn't mean the deal was going to go through. It yeah. might not have. Leon did a great job on on helping me out, get this I organized, and uh, and it went like clockwork. But I would have done it. I would have done it, and I would have probably traveled further for it. So yes, that's that's a good point. Well, that's incredible. Well, here are both of the cards. Once again, I know. Uh, obviously, are like. Are you more of a first edition fan or a Shadows fan? Barring no, like the price aside, do you like having, you know, just like a nice, simple Shadowless, or do you like having the first edition stamp on there? You know, that's a, actually a really interesting question. Uh, I was the one who originally got the Shadowless cards designated, and that was in uh, about 2007. Uh, Shadowless cards were labeled by PSA as if they were regular, regular unlimited. unlimited cards and uh, I got them to label it I collected shadowless cards all the way from the beginning I would go to shows 
they weren't that popular back then. I bought up all I saw. And uh, so actually my heart is with the Shadowless. But then there's okay. something else. Uh, maybe, maybe you've seen uh, people have been using fake stamps. I don't know really? if you ever no, discuss. I didn't even have do, do you ever discuss that on your no, channel? I, I've, I've done videos mm -hmm. as far as like uh, how to tell if cards are fake. Oh, okay. And so, so your community is aware of that. Oh, they're absolutely aware. Oh, okay. They they love it when we tell them how to spot fake Pokemon cards. Okay. Well, one thing about uh, fake first edition stamps mm -hmm. is you can put it, you can put it on a Shadowless card. You can somehow some of these guys are pretty good. They can put a first edition stamp on there. Okay, uh -huh. but you can't fake a Shadowless card. Maybe you can fake a first edition, yeah, but you can't fake a Shadowless card because a Shadowless card has nothing there. So right. you can't erase this stamp. Uh -huh. So I really believe that the best investment is probably going to be the Shadowless series. I think first edition is going to go up and up and up also, but uh -huh. I, think, I think Shadowless is, the, is a good direction to go in right now. All right, that's actually, mm -hmm. I, that's some smart advice, guys. Yeah. Smart mm -hmm. advice from Gary. Well, um, one question that I've been wanting to ask mm -hmm. is, how do you, going on that, mm -hmm. how do you see the future of Pokemon and Pokemon, the card industry? Because for myself, you know, I'm a collector myself, yes. and there's tons of collectors out there, and it's just kind of like, the, the cards prices, you know, they keep on going up, but it's just kind of like, the Pokemon, the state of Pokemon, I guess. What do you, how do you see about that? The, the, way, the way I feel about the state of Pokemon is nothing but positive. Uh, I've noticed in my life a number of popular series of collectibles have come out. And for about 10 or 15 years after the end of production on a collectible, items get hotter and hotter and hotter because those young people are growing older. They're starting to make right. all the money and they're buying all their memories back. Right, uh, that's so true. Pokemon is still being made. Pokemon is still having their big tournaments. Mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're, you know, the regionals and the world championships. Uh, I know that we're safe for another 10 or 15 years because these kids today that are buying these new packs, they're gonna be collecting these 10, 15 years from now. Uh -huh. So the hobby is very healthy now, Good. and it's going to get healthier as uh, the next. As long as they keep making Pokemon, just add mm -hmm. 10, 15 years to it. Yeah, and there, there, there's your your window. That that's ex kind of exactly mm -hmm. what I was thinking as well. Mm -hmm. And as I know, like a lot of people my age and our kids, mm -hmm. we're start like we're starting to have kids, mm -hmm. but we showcase. Uh, they actually, I've people they'll come by my channel and they'll tell me. Hey, I've gotten back into collecting the card game and stuff, and now I'm telling my kids, and my kids are collecting as well. Right. So it kind of continues on with the generations. It keeps the game going. You know, something else that I've noticed that happened, especially with the Heart Squad, I've noticed that people that used to collect, they were enthusiasts when they're young. Now they go and they watch your community, watch your videos, mm -hmm. and it strikes something in their head. It makes them want to, it makes them want to look further so they watch another one of your videos and then another one of your videos and all of a sudden they're right back into it right and uh because now the memories come flooding it's, back it's in all about that. and also. then and next thing you know it's google 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 ebay you know and they're and they're, and they're collecting they're the newest cards. sets and they're collecting the newest sets and and their kids their kids are going to get into it too so it's kind of like a uh, snowball rolling downhill right a lot of it is thanks to you guys and your yeah. and your community like so, y'all, listen, yo, boy. that's incredible. Well, mm -hmm. uh, before we go, like first off, I just wanna say thank you so much just for uh, safely getting here and everything, oh, for taking yes. the time to uh, speak to everybody in the Heart Squad and sharing this incredibly momentous occasion because this is most likely the biggest transaction in Pokemon mm -hmm. card history. Well, it's my honor. And I have to tell you something, Leon. Uh -huh. I've had a lot of requests, uh, people wanting to interview me. Oh, really? And I have never granted a single interview except for my brother right here. No that's way. One, one interview and that's it. And I'm probably not going to do any more unless oh I gosh. come back down here and I do it with you. So I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Well, we got to I got to shake your shake. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I uh I, like I'm absolutely speechless mm -hmm. right now. Like guys, I was driving to come meet him for the deal and 
I, I told them I was so nervous uh, about just being in your presence. Just because, and you are, he's the most down to earth person. So just myself, I just was like, Leonhart, just be yourself, calm down, just be yourself. Just it's okay, it's okay. I gotta say like, it's, you have been absolutely what I thought you were gonna be. Just an amazingly kind, genuine person. Well, and you. just in the world to have somebody like that and in the Pokemon community especially, like I, I can't put words to that. So thank you so much for allowing me this honor just to, to speak to you and well, the feeling for the heart squad. The feeling is more than mutual and I'm really glad I was able to share this with all you guys. Absolutely. Is there anything mm -hmm. before we go you'd like to mention to anybody or? Nah. All right, well, <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, of course, of and course. And I wish and you the best. My pleasure and I hope to see you and see you guys again soon. Y'all will, y'all right. will. Oh, Heart Squad, was that not incredibly exciting? That was, and I didn't know at the time until he mentioned it, the only interview that Gary has done. And of course, he chose to do it for y'all, the Heart Squad. So uh, I just wanted to say to Gary, if you're watching this video, thank you so, so much for allowing me the privilege, allowing me the honor to not only broker that deal, the most expensive Pokemon card card deal in Pokemon card history took place and I helped broker it so I am so honored to have done something for that and uh, just to say thank you for being an incredibly kind genuine amazing person Gary is uh, you heard him talking his story his fascination with the Pokemon card game his fact that it the cards resemble his family and how close he is to his son and that's what the game's about and that's what Pokemon is about and you hear me preaching it in almost every single video uh, it's just it's a game that brings families closer together it brings people of all ages of all types together and no matter what people say or what people do do what you love do what you enjoy and that's what we love together is the Pokemon card game. So I want to thank Gary or King Pokemon. I want to thank you for watching out there in the Heart Squad. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video. My name is Lean Heart. Stay awesome, stay positive, and as always, I will see y'all in the next video.